weather's strap. warming up. We're feeling summery. We're feeling the vibes. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm feeling the summer vibes. Talk about like. Uh, you know, don't leave your dogs in your car today kind of a day. It feels like July. If there's anything that that living in our area passively, aggressively reminds us, it's when the weather changes. Oh, boy. And you just can't, like, avoid getting in the spirit of whatever the fuck the weather's doing. (laughs) Oh, my God, celluloid, you're cracking me up. That's exactly how I feel. Like, as soon as it, it, like, started to get nice, and I was like, yes, this is what I live for. Winter's over. Let's go. And then two seconds later, it was 94, and I was like, you know what I like? I like when it's cold. (laughs) Which is interesting because we're such, like, beachy, tropical vibes people normally. Yeah. But when you're in... Without the beach. When you're in, like, a landlocked place that gets really hot, it's it's kind of my first time experiencing that, um, it's a different kind of air movement. You know what I mean? It's definitely a different... It feels different. It's a different thing altogether, I would say. Oh, welcome in makes mistakes. Happy to uh, let you lurk. Uh, no problems. We are obviously starting earlier than usual, so uh, our synth friend today is Lily J, who is. is tuning in from France. Can you believe that? She's amazing, and um, she's making time for us today. At, you know, it's much later for her there, so we had to start a little earlier just so that it wasn't like the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, celluloid, don't, don't remind me how cozy it is to wear layers by a fire, which I complain about when it's happening and wish that it was summer and now it's summer and I want that. You know, you know how it goes. And spending money on air conditioning is not making me happy right now. I know. It's, that's it's really like, the... Ooh. Yeah, it's like a hundred here, so... That's really the thing that, like, ends up ruining any uh, joy that I have about the heat. Yeah, as soon as that kicks in, you're like, wait, do I like this? Because our AC in particular uh, is super loud. loud, Like, I mean, you could probably hear it right now because it's on, and it's so fucking loud and obnoxious. And, you know, I mean, we might do a little recording. (laughs) It's tough. It's tough when when it's really loud. Um, It's not really, like, a place where I can, like, open air record things. I'm a big fan of contact mics. Mm. Yeah. In the summertime. So contact luckily summertime. like contact mics are awesome and do a lot of what I want them to do for me. So it works out. There you have it. There you have <laughs> My AC sounds like a two stroke lawnmower that's how Yep. It's yeah, a drone. My, yes, we drone to it. My AC is like <laughs> I can't even describe in words how loud and just you know what? I think we should just appreciate it though because I I'm love like, my air conditioning. <laughs> It, it does works. its job and it does it well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so Lily J is joining us from France, and she yeah, for real. Uh, she is someone that we met through the Golden Shrimp Guild, and that we got to meet in Berlin for Super Booth. So I feel like we're gonna just be like this. Berlin so, is responsible for this one, I would say. Hold on to your hats. Um, let's bring Lily in, um, and hopefully you're gonna have lots of fun questions for her as well. And we are going to uh, send her a little alert to get her on the stream. Deep listening to my HVAC. That is celluloid. You just continue. You are consistent. And I Most pinned. It. All right. We're going to bring Lily in now. Just one second. Let me get it uh, started. And here we are. Welcome in, Lily. Thank you for being here. Hey. Hey. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I love the vibes of your space that you're in too. So we're probably going to have some, like, show us a little of what you have going on questions. Um, I see Mr. X is in the chat. Welcome in. We Mr. got X. some good friends here. Uh, we were just letting everyone know that we, um, we know you from the Golden Shrimp Guild and we got to meet in Berlin at Super Booth, even though yeah. neither of us live there. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. So that and, was really um, fun. I'm, yeah, I'm wondering how much lag there is when we're talking, but I know it's... Oh, uh... I didn't mean to, like, <laughs> oh, <no>. spoil <laughs> the stream with that. Like, I was, I was, I was kind of joking. Like, it's not that bad. There's no, no, it's not. Yeah, there's no lag for us, like, between us talking. There's just mm. always going to be, like, that millisecond delay to the stream. So if yeah. anybody's having any issues with us, let us know, but we can't do anything about it, so... <laughs> During our little tech test, I complained about the fact that it, you know, there's definitely some latency, you know, and so I might've taken it a little too far. Uh, let's just, have to, just have to anticipate when you're talking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like if you're like, 
improvising using like remote technology it's similar to that like you just kind of have oh to gosh, like yeah, anticipate the beat yeah <laughs> so i'll do this okay um, yeah, but so... i'm going to uh when we were yeah but like i was just thinking about meeting you guys in berlin and and uh how i've only been streaming on uh, the golden shrimp for about a year and a half and it just felt like uh, this, it like increasingly took us um, important uh, space and importance in my life, mm -hmm. uh, like, like sort of um, in, in an organic way. And uh, like this community just naturally came together and uh, I'm super, uh, like uh, super amazed actually by it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we feel the same way. I think it's been, it's been less than a year for us that we've, been aware and part of the shrimp guild and like just sort of feels like it's been a thousand years you know like it's just it's such an a natural organic sort of community that just feels so right like of course this exists of course we're all part of it but it really is magical um and the group that was at super booth was just like mind-blowing to me how mm. amazing everybody was things yeah. escalated very fast in this relationship between us and, the <laughs> group guild. and so yeah, we're Enjoying mm. it, enjoying it. Yeah, so how long were you uh, streaming on Twitch versus, you know, knowing about the Shrimp Guild? Uh, pretty much, it pretty much coincided. Mm. I actually, no, I think I created my Twitch account uh, because of my of, of Arturia during the confinement. Mm. Uh, we, um, we had like our Christmas party on Twitch. And we, we, were, we were talking in the chat and then some people did some live sets and I did a live set. I did like a DJ set on Twitch, and then uh, I think it was around that time that um, Mr. X uh, found me and um, offered to make me join the, the, the GSG. So mm -hmm. this was about, yeah, in 2021. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that answered but a lot. So Mr. X found you. Yes. And I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe he can uh, remind everyone how in the chat, but I don't remember. Um, I think it was on Instagram, but I, I don't know how he found my music exactly. I, I forgot how, <laughs> but it was just like, uh, he was like, yeah, you should really uh, stream uh, with us. And, and I just started there. Yeah, same. I could say the same story. Oh, he found you on Facebook, actually. Wow. Ooh, Facebook. Facebook. He was digging deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, because, I yeah. always think people are finding each other through Twitch, but I think there's more to it than that. Yeah, and I, I, I think, I mean, this is what my cousin said in the States, uh, that, that Facebook doesn't have the same place anymore that it has in Europe. Like Facebook's for boomers or old people in the States. And, and in, in France, it's, pretty, it's very much still the main platform for mm. connecting and making events and stuff. So Interesting. Wow. I see some friends in the chat. I'm just going to say hi real quick. Dwoger, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a minute. Hope you're doing well. Dwoge. Mr. Spock Synth Guy definitely knows who you are, Lily. So we're all in this, like, a web of connections and friendships here on Twitch and yeah. through all the socials. But that is fascinating to me Absolutely. to hear because we definitely, um, the jokes about Facebook in America are just like... <laughs> you know really it's like baked into everyday life at this point and no one it's funny because people are like no one's on facebook it's just for rumors but then we uh don't we're like people are pretending that they're not on there clearly you know mm -hmm. like they're pretending well, like, like they're not but they still are i think because it's like not cool but everything in our lives got connected through facebook so there's really no way to not be unless you went in and like permanently deleted your account yeah um, but yeah, because I, uh, I also found your I found your Facebook uh, page, the Galaxy Electric Facebook page, which I don't know if you've had it for a long time, but it, there's a lot of people on there. Like it's a big page. It's great. Uh, yeah, that's kind of where everything got started for us. Like there was just this, um, I guess, because we've been on there since the inception 20... of the band, really. Yeah, 12. <laughs> it's probably it's been a while. Like we, we kind of put things on there when we first started making music to like that's more than 10 years people. ago i know i'm sorry i admitted that amount of time <laughs> that's more than 10 years ago i can't believe that time really flies but yeah there's just been um consistent like uh just people wanting to connect with us there so we never left and so i think maybe other people did so like our stuff kind of got crazy 
Um, mm. I will admit that I mostly use Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, this is funny. Everyone's like admitting they only use Facebook. In There's the a chat. few relationships that I have that exist almost solely on Facebook. I'll I'll be honest. Like you know, it's like that's where we chat. Yeah. Yeah. The, the connections. Like I just think that the way. Well, it's probably for bad reasons. The way that it has all our data, but it you can you can connect so directly with people there in a way that's a lot easier than on other platforms to have a like a human yeah. conversation versus like someone who you're like oh you make cool art like i'll find people on instagram and won't know who they really are mm -hmm. you know whereas on facebook you have to have like your personal information tied to it i can't believe we're talking that much about that's this. a good point and then there's always the group i the groups as well is what keeps us there too yeah. yes Hmm. Do you have any uh, group activity on Facebook that you find helpful? Recently, recently yes, uh, cat groups. Oh. <laughs> I adopted my cat six months ago, and, and I had some questions and concerns about her, and then I just stayed in those groups, and there's people posting photos and stories about their cats, and it's uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Oh, I didn't realize you're, you had gotten your cat only six months ago. Yeah, but she's she's one year she she's turning one in June. I don't have the exact date, but first so she's cat one I take it. No, but I have oh. the cats I had a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So why? Gotcha. Oh, yeah. wow, that's so cute. I mean, synth cats are such a thing. So I mean, the official they are just drawn. They want to crawl all over it. Do we have a cat in the room? Oh no, we have a cat on synths in space or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've seen, I, I've seen it. I, I even saw people wear this at Super <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's gotten around. <laughs> it's like the official mascot, I think. Yeah. It's the cat. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I love this. Everyone's saying what platforms they're on. I love that. Someone <laughs> oh, said, yeah. I think it was Dwozier said, where in France? I didn't know Snapchat was still a thing, by the way. <laughs> where in France? Yeah. You mean where... I, yeah, I'm where are you? Yeah, where are you? You don't have to like give us your coordinates, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get the exact address. But it's a, uh, it's in the the south um, southeast of France. It's not like the full south, but it's uh, in the French Alps on the border of the northern. It's like on the border of Switzerland and northern Italy, and uh, so it's like, I'm um, like the town that I'm in and uh, Grenoble is the big city. It's actually quite low in altitude but there's the mountains surrounding us so people call it uh, in french in cuvette they call it like uh you're being you're like kind of in a uh like a bowl you know because mm. all surrounding you everywhere there are mountains and uh, some people say that they think they find it uh claustrophobic but me i like me it's the opposite i feel like it, it just you have every time you look out the window or you look up there's you know the the mountains and it's, it's different uh, throughout all the seasons, so like you never get bored. I feel from uh, of the landscape here. Oh sounds magical. Yeah, you just sold me on that hardcore. That <laughs> sounds amazing. Um, I love that. I grew up in nothing like that, but in a, a valley community. So like, it, I, I was just telling him about this. How I feel. So you're a valley girl. I really enjoy. I'm a valley girl. I really enjoy that feeling of being in the uh -huh. basin. Because yeah. you know, like, you're kind of, prote there's like a, something mm. primal, right? Like, you're protected by yeah. mountains, but you also know you have, like, the lushness, mm. right? Usually is at the, in the valley areas, so. Mm -hmm. I love That's the, the word you I described it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I, I can't even, we've never been to that part of the world, but it sounds so romantic and. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like inspiring. But I've actually, um, I've actually only been in this, in this region for, for five years, or like, Five years ago, I moved here. Then I moved away during COVID, and I got the um, got my job at Arturia because Arturia is from this region. Like it's a it's like a twenty. It's gonna be twenty five years old next year. The company. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. same when I grew I grew up. I was born in the states, and I moved around a lot as a kid. And I but but with my parents, we never came to this region before. Like only for skiing, you know, in the Alps, like maybe two or three times. And so it was like my very first time discovering the city and this uh, in this region. And, you know, like sometimes you go somewhere and you feel welcomed by it, like you feel like you could live there. And, and then when I when I had left uh, three years ago, I felt like this was, was a big mistake. And then when I when I got the job to come back, I knew like it was meant to be that I would have to be in this region because it it just felt right. There you go. 
<laughs> wow. That's, that's an awesome story. Really cool. Wow. <laughs> that you felt that, but then was that part of, like, did that sort of like come together organically to bring you back? You yeah, it was just, to it? it was the perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, like when I, well, I had a studio cause I was, um, so I, um, I moved here the first time in 2017 and I was living in Paris still at the time I was in sound engineering school. Mm -hmm. And so I found, I found this internship at Arturia. I found this sound design internship, um, luckily cause, uh, out of my own research, because the, all the internships that my school was offering us were, you know, the, the very classic ones in, in sound school, which is like a sound tech stage hand you know yeah. um and like, sound, I, hated, yeah. mm -hmm. I hated that so much it's just not for me mm -hmm. and i wanted to be something like in my in a studio doing creative stuff in a studio and not like um this uh, stress and like this um physical work and uh and then the, there was that i did like four or five internships like that and then there were there was uh, the other option that they gave us was assistant of a sound engineer in a in a in a music studio and it, like the, the sound engineer never let us do anything <laughs> interesting. Like we, we could never touch the mixing board. It was all about like, you know, setting up and putting the mics and the cables. But I felt like it was kind of hard to evolve in that or, or mm -hmm. go, go anywhere with that. And then, so I, I was like uh, in my last year and I was desperate to find something. Uh, and I found, I saw a Grenoble sound design. And I, at the time I didn't even know what sound design was. I didn't know it was a career or anything. But like uh, the the title spoke to me, and I thought this is something I'd like, and so I I got the internship, and I ended up living between Paris and Grenoble for eight months, and uh, and so that's how I that's how I moved there, and uh, then when I became a freelancer after school, uh, and uh, my parents were like, oh, you should move in with us, and they live in another part of France, and I felt and that was a big mistake because <laughs> I. <laughs> Because I, I left this region that I love, but then it was to, you know, to not pay rent and to, and then there was COVID mm. and so I was locked up with my parents and oh. it was getting, and I was doing, you know, just working, um, you know, when you're a freelancer, you just work, you work on your own all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I was getting, I was getting really isolated and I was craving just uh, being um, social and, and like getting up and getting dressed and, you know, going to going to do something with people and so then it was just a perfect timing that the Arturia sound design team offered a full-time position like a uh, three year almost three years ago so I moved back there wow oh my gosh was I was just thinking this whole time I'm so glad you didn't pursue the live music side of things because then you would have <laughs> gone right into COVID and it would have been over Oof, yeah um, wow yeah, I, wonder what I wonder what, what all those people did during the um, the COVID, because in France they gave uh, they gave some money to people who can. Oh, uh, yeah. that's right. Uh, right. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness, a lot of questions here. Oh, welcome in, Franck. I have some questions so too. Um, I also went to audio school, so I've been down mm -hmm. that road, um, and I never really got a job in the industry, um, but I didn't really try. I mean, like I kind of I I did like some internships and stuff, and then I got a job. That I was kind of happy with, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna mm. keep it, uh, you know, more of my passion. Mm. Mm. Um, but I know how hard it is to get a job in the industry, so commendable, yeah, that's really rad. Um, but what I was gonna say is, um, do your other how are how are you doing as compared to maybe like some of your other classmates? Um, how am I doing? How in terms of now? like employment and like you know. Oh getting... yeah, so I I kept in touch with some of them. Like I don't talk to them much, but I I was checking out what they're doing, and a lot of them, the a lot of them are not working in the industry, and but those that are are doing live sound. Most of them, they're they're like sound engineers of concerts, and they're like roadies, or they're they work in a concert um, a concert uh, place in in Paris or something. Yeah. Well, you know, no, no shade on the live sound industry, you know, it's not really my bag either, uh, <laughs> but it's super rad that, you know, you got that job. So, you know, that's, mm. I think you yeah, chose a, a cool path. Very magical. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, um, I think that LinkedIn today is going to be super helpful for, uh, you know, meeting, like not only finding job openings and internship openings, but 
uh, you know, making a network of people who are in the similar interests and similar career paths. Mm -hmm. And then like getting, you know, asking them, because I've had people contact me on LinkedIn to ask me about how, you know, about sound design and who to, it's just like a good place to, to find open doors, I think. Yeah. Ooh, that's a great tip to anybody out there who's interested in, you know, just connecting more with people on the industry side of it versus like, you know, creation, performing hobby side of it that we mm. have here. Um, I wanted to ask how having that as your career and like your day to day affects how you balance staying inspired and creative as an artist. Mm. Uh, so it affects when I I'm able to put my energy into creating. Um, because I spend like uh, eight hours a day on the computer mm -hmm. for my work. Mm -hmm. And when I come home, the last thing I can physically do is do more computer. And, and obviously I work, we work on, on a DAW and we, I, like I have all my sessions on there and, uh, it would be, as I tell myself, it would be more, um, easy to have a balanced, uh, you know, to, to do this in a balanced way. If I was just an acoustic musician, oh. cause then I could really like tear away from the computer. Uh, but I end up doing pretty minimal a minimal amount of of my own music during the week and it's during the it's like starting friday night until sunday where i um allow myself to have because my week is so full and then i allow myself to uh to you know go and hike and go go on a walk and uh really unplug from work mm -hmm. and then uh, uh then take time to to be in the studio and to try to not look at the time passing and to uh to just uh be in in my zone mm. yeah that balance of like being away from the computer it sounds like you're in a place where that might be easier to tap into nature and kind of getting mm. fresh air and changing your perspective away from the computers so that's i think that's what <laughs> lit me up when you were talking about it i was like oh that sounds like an amazing just like it's right there for you uh to mm. to, to but i have to admit uh I have to admit, I don't go hiking as much as I wish. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> like, <Don't we> all? <laughs> but I think that's often what people, what happens to people when they live somewhere, you know, with the thing like the, the beach or the mountain. It's like you, it's not, I don't take it for granted at all, but I just, I'm not like going and getting, getting out there. And especially because the, the really beautiful long hikes, they require you to wake up early yes. and like, I wake up early all I'm like I'm like no <laughs> I don't want to put an alarm on that in, on Saturday or Sunday so I think that's also why like I usually stay near around here and I go running along the lake, the river there's like a river that stretches for miles and miles and there's like small hikes so wow yeah that mm -hmm. totally makes sense that's exactly how it would be like if you live at the ocean you're going like you know not as much as you think you would <laughs> that's so mm -hmm. funny <laughs> yeah that's the way it goes, it seems. Yeah, the uh, the live sound life is definitely hard on your back. Yeah, yeah. We had um, to carry really stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's very intense and the hours are insane. Um, the hours too. So yeah. I was curious just like before we kind of move away from your day job stuff, <laughs> uh, if you could maybe just share with people who don't really know what that means to be a sound designer for Arturia, sure. like, what's that like? What's that sure. involved? Is that involved? Sure. Okay. Um, so, the like, even just going back to the the basics of what the job description is is the creation and management of the presets. So all the sounds of the hardware and software. And uh, when you come in, when I came in as an intern, that's where I was the most, um, you know, just doing like just creating stuff. But then as now, like now in my role that I have today, five years later, I'm doing a lot of managing of sound designers because we, uh, we create, um, we produce so much more con content and like so much more, um, uh, so many instruments, uh, just like at a, like a way more condensed, uh, the roadmap is just so condensed mm -hmm. compared to like four years ago, the, the pace has quickened basically. And so we, we're, we're unable to make them all in house. Um, so I spend like my, my day to day is a lot of giving feedback. Like, so I write briefs, artistic briefs. So that's my favorite part of the job oh. is like you, um, think up, uh, you, you, uh, uh, like, uh, conceive of, um, an idea for a theme and then you look for the audio references 
and all the the guidelines, the artistic guidelines, mm -hmm. so that people will create those sounds that you're looking for. And uh, then you have to call upon the right people because we have like I have a we have a repertoire of like 60 or 70 people, wow. and uh, we keep trying. We try to keep um, making it more diverse and uh, especially like. Uh, what's really important is to be able to cover all the music genres, which is like we're we're still that's like a a path that we're on because Arturia historically was uh, known for synthwave and you know new age bands like uh, making tribute presets of the you know the classic uh, 70s and 80s mm -hmm. music, and that's something that we still obviously we want to still nurture that uh, that that uh, whole field of music. Um, but we want to, like, over the past few years, we've been really trying to cover the uh, more urban music and um, even, like, better ambient and cinematic sounds, like the more modern, more modern sounds just in general. Mm -hmm. And it's it's um, hard to, it's a challenge to do that when you're, like, because our company is in Europe, we don't have, we don't have, like, that many contacts in the States, for example. Uh, and like le even less in Asia, and like that's something that that's, that's like uh, something that I've been trying to do is first to like get you know more uh, um, more sound designers from different cultures, more women, like more diverse uh, a more diverse offer of sounds. Wow. And um, so yeah, writing briefs, and then we I give a lot of feedback. So you become good at giving feedback to people to give technical and artistic feedback on their on their sounds. Um, and then, um, but then obviously my favorite part and the reason why I'm doing this is creating sounds, mm -hmm. even though I, I, now it only represents a small percentage of the, of the time that I'm, that I'm working. Uh, we also create audio content. So like if you go on our, the Arturia website, all the demos, you know, the examples, the right. sound examples. Oh yeah. That's a whole other thing you have to do. <laughs> yeah. Like whenever there's a release of an instrument of a product, we make the audio demos. And yeah. uh, if we want a demo track that's like a you know really pro and of a, a genre that we're unable to to fulfill, we'll, we have also we have music producers that we we, we contact that we brief. Mm -hmm. And um, there's other stuff, but uh, we're in a lot of I'm in a lot of meetings. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Wow. Um, oh, that's so cool. No. Cause I, I wouldn't have expected that to be what you said as your day to day, but you're at this place now. I'm curious, to, I'm curious what you expected. Oh, uh -oh. I don't know. I think cause when you said like, I'm in a DAW all day and I figured you were, you know, building stuff in there versus you're reviewing hmm. things and giving feedback. I mean, oh yeah. That's, yeah, like, yeah. that's a whole different part of your brain to have to use. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's really cool that you're, and you're also like having a say in building this roster of like a more diverse group of sound designers to pull from. I thought that was really interesting. I wasn't expecting that either. That's cool. And um, yeah, and also like we're five in my team and there's one of my colleagues now has sort of branched off into more of the li doing listening sessions. Cause that's also a, a part of the job is to help the, the digital signal processing team and the software team to build the instruments, like to get the, the engine sounding right. Mm. Uh, if, we're, if we're copying, if we're emulating something to get, you know, to get it to sound the, the closest possible. And we have one of my one of my colleagues now, he's not really doing preset stuff anymore. He's doing, he's really like with them all the time, doing listening sessions, analyzing the, the sound of the engines and stuff. And like, it's a much more scientific part of the, of the job. Mm -hmm. and, I'm more I'm more in like the the presets artistic creation stuff mm -hmm. wow that's amazing I can tell there's a lot of love for Arturia in the chat oh yeah <laughs> I think we agree um I obviously I'm a I have a Mellotron so when I think of Arturia I always think of the the Mellotron stuff and I know they also have like an easel so it's sort of like our mm -hmm. Mikla Mellotron uh, combo um, I'm always like you know, no matter what, Arturia has our back if any of this, you know, fails is, or like we need like a, a virtual version for yeah. when we play out or something like that. Have you have you guys tried the sound of it, of those? Uh, I've demoed, I, I have an active or not an active demo, but like a demo that expired on my 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro. 
uh, of the easel, and I thought it was rad. I mean, like, I have the soft tube um, versions of the Buchla stuff, mm. and they're completely different, but, like, I still, like, compare, comparing, like, the gate and everything, like, I thought it sounded really good. Like, I, I was impressed, and I owned an easel at the time uh, that I demoed it, so, you know, I was able to compare it to the original. I even taught, like, I think we had, like, a... <laughs> A fan of ours who uh, bought like a lesson with me to use uh, to do oh, whatever yeah, they wanted, that's how you use that. and so I use I, I use the demo to teach them that lesson I because know. they wanted to learn about the easel. Well, oh, I see. Oh, welcome in, our doer thirteen. I see that you're a first time chatter, um, and that you also work at Arturia. So, <laughs> well, that's oh, our doer. Yes, yes. Uh, Mathieu, he's in, the, he's in the quality assurance team. Oh, very important. Right. Yes, very important. <laughs> yeah, everyone agrees that the Arturia's uh, sounds for the ESOL, the Meltron, iOS app, everything is amazing. So yeah, there's a lot of love in the chat. Any of the synth stuff that I've tried, you know, just I mean, sounds pretty top notch, I would say. Some of the things you were talking about in terms of like wanting to expand some of the sound palette, I really felt when you were demoing the Micro Freak Seller yeah. that Superbooth um, made me want one. I mean, that, that wouldn't take too much, but <laughs> the way that you uh, demoed it and then made your track with it and you were like, um, I assume you were uh, doing a combination of live and and sort of like preset things. Yeah, it was performance. Really, um, yeah, there was, I was just playing, uh, I just had one track in Ableton that where I was going through presets and soloing on top of pre-recorded stuff. Because then I had someone come and ask me, oh, like, did you have, like, the Microfeek playing all those tracks at the same time? I was like, no, no. <laughs> how many parts also, multi timbral yeah. is it, though? How, how many parts? Yeah. You mean uh, just it by fun? itself and yeah. standalone? Uh, it's monophonic. Oh, OK. One part. And uh, you, you have six, up to six voices of uh, paraphonic, okay. six, up to six, six notes at a time. Gotcha. But it's just one, yeah, it's Look just one. One part, one, mm. MIDI, one MIDI channel. Yeah. Gotcha. One MIDI channel. Yeah. Yeah, so when we yeah. were at Superbooth, you were doing a demo uh, at the Arturia stand that we, <laughs> thanks to Mr. X again, um, he, we had run into him when we were running around and he was like, oh my gosh, Lily J starting in five minutes, you gotta go over there. And so we booked it over there and we got it right at the beginning and that was really yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks for the pointer there, Wolf, I yeah. appreciate that. We wouldn't have made it, cause it was kind of in an area uh, that we hadn't been yet. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, there's like, there was so much to explore. A lot, yeah. All the Buchla stuff was at the furthest end, farthest away from everything, so we were there a lot. <laughs> um, and yours was in the like the rooms that were in that back hall. I just couldn't believe how many. You just like yeah. There was just more and more and more. That place was so huge. So I was just so excited that we found you because we were a little lost at first. Um, yeah. But, but that was especially really the, awesome. the bottom part. You know, there's there's stairs where near where the archery thing was, and there's a whole underground, uh, not underground, but like lower level. Yeah, that like people... the lower level of the upper level, yeah. And uh, then when I got home, I went on, I saw a, a video on Instagram of, of Superbooth and it showed this gymnasium mm -hmm. that was, and I didn't even, I didn't even see that. So <laughs> I, I missed an entire building. So Same. I didn't even know where it was. Yeah, there were like, they were doing group workshops and things and like we, we just I didn't make it in the tent. We I were just everything that was that, the one place I didn't go. <laughs> we like saw you would see people or you would see a thing and you would just kind of flow with what was lighting you up and trying mm. to stick to like a schedule of things was just way too hard for me. Right. Mm. Yeah. I didn't go to the acid booth either because it was literally right next to the <laughs> the shrimp. We booth. never went inside and, and I didn't go in. And it's so funny because like I love those instruments, you know. It would have been a place that I would have definitely enjoyed hanging out and I just didn't go for some reason because it was kind of like in our ear the entire time. Yeah, I felt like so I was So I felt like I was I felt like I got to experience it uh vicariously. <laughs> oh, I see we're we're getting some user feedback in the chat. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> Oh, so people, was, I have um, I have a I bug. Said not to do that. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, yeah the I, I yeah the micro freak is great. Um, 
the acid booth was the center. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Connecticut, welcome in. Uh, just talking about like updates and, and and things like that, but I think everyone's pretty. It's like they're having to try yeah. to, to have feedback because we're the, so happy. Update, the, the micro freak update was sent this week. Normally, like the 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 one I was demoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what they were talking about. Yep, exactly. Uh, so uh, let's move away from your day job stuff, even though it's like part of all of this, right? Like we're all getting so lit up by it. Um, we but, can talk about it all stream. But I know like in terms of like kind of trying to find a segue, let me find one. Um, when you were talking about wanting to expand the sound palette and find different, you know, diverse voices to use, it, it did make me go, ooh, I'm so excited to talk more about your music because it does uh, break uh, genre boundaries, I think. Mm. So I want to know more about you and like your origins of how you got into making electronic music at all. And like you've moved around a lot and I think that really informs your sound. So I would love to hear more about that. <laughs> well, um, I started uh, music, I started uh, with piano. And mm -hmm. I was, I started, did like classical piano lessons from five to 18 years old. And uh, also in high school, I played cello and I played electric guitar. Ooh. And it was my teenage years that I was listening to a lot of metal and I was playing guitar for like five hours a day after after school. And I was really, I mean, like musically um, immersing myself, uh, kind of almost isolating myself. And that, that's actually um, like music was sort of there when I was feeling isolated when I because we were moving a lot mm -hmm. and was in, a, in it didn't impact me in a negative way, except when I was a teenager, when we, we were um, living in Malaysia, oh, wow. and we moved when I was 16 to, to Japan. And uh, like, of course, you know, I would love to live in Japan now, but it's, you know, when you're that age and you're 16 and you have all your friends and you want to graduate with them. And I was feeling good and I was feeling uh, like I belonged in that in that place. And then you get moved somewhere else. And and like, I just did not, um, I pretty much uh, rejected the move and was very angry and then like, that I was able to ve like channel that anger, that uh, isolation, in more music, and then um, when I went to, uh, but then at that so at the time there was no electronic music yet at all, and then when I moved to when I went to to a university, I was in uh, Montreal, after well like yeah for five years. Oh, so you and, intentionally went to Montreal for school? Yeah, for okay. school. Yeah, at uh, at McGill, I went to McGill and. And uh, there was, um, I had made friends who, there was like a big techno scene, minimal techno. And uh, so I was going to, it was like my first time being exposed to this, uh, this kind of electronic music. And then I just got a tractor. So I started experimenting with tractor, DJing a bit. And uh, wow. then I, Ableton, it was at the time it was Ableton 8, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, and then I I was just uh, spending my time messing around with Ableton. So I, I didn't I didn't have any VSTs at the time. Um, before that, I had already done some tracks on GarageBand, but just like my vocals and guitar, like yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I really discovered using synths was really then. It wasn't before. Uh, I didn't have any hardware synths. I had I had a digital um, I had a Roland digital uh, piano uh, digital synth. Phantom uh, that my parents got me, but it, I was basically just using it to practice piano before. <laughs> and so, so it was really with Ableton that I discovered synths and uh, discovered uh, synthesis, but I was mainly um, using my, I had a, a field recorder and I was experimenting recording stuff with it. So I was recording just any kind of sounds to make percussions and my voice and the cello and uh, just ambient sounds and putting those, uh, making a sort of collage. And yeah. at the time, at the time, so my first tracks were kind of, was really inspired by minimal techno. It was very sparse, very dry sound, uh, but like a lot of glitch and like, a, um, like micro house, you know, like all mm -hmm. these. Yeah. Uh, Cause we're talking what, like 06, 07? No. 07? Oh six, oh seven. So I'm thinking Live Eight oh, came out. Uh, uh, no, 2000, uh, 20, 2010. 2010, okay. 20, yeah. Okay. So like twelve years ago. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 
15 years ago. And um, maybe I have my Ableton Live timeline screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was still eight. Maybe I just turned became become uh, Ableton eight, but uh, uh, I made some uh, some tracks like that, and then. I spent a while not really making, not really finishing anything, uh, and it's kind of hard to to see like what kind of uh, it's kind of hard to explain the progression. But all I know is when I listen to my music now and back then, today it's like the sound is much fuller, mm -hmm. like uh, harmonically, and, and uh, it's more. It's it's more warm and it's brighter as well. Back then it was dark, maybe so I was in a dark place. <laughs> mm. uh, and so uh, today I really um, still uh, I think this still stays in all the music I make is to uh, exploring the, the the balance between the balancing the contrast between analog or between um, acoustic I mean acoustic warm sounds and uh, uh, you know experimenting with synths mm -hmm. so the more uh, the more uh, digital and and uh, machine like sounds mm -hmm. and uh, i know like uh, Aphex twin really inspired me mm. okay and yeah. so there we go. some other medium <laughs> that has like you know like this lush pad or this uh, this soundscape you know that's uh, really smooth really really uh, uh, enveloping but then the the beat the groove is extremely harsh and and uh, disjointed, and I just love exploring the 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 tapestry that you can make with these kinds of textures. Absolutely, yeah, Ooh. that's cool. Yeah, that was beautifully said too. That sort of juxtaposition of those two elements, yeah, it's really fun to play with like beauty and then like harshness, and yeah, yeah. it seems to go together like perfectly. It, it and they enhance each other. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it um when I'm listening to your music, now that I'm knowing more about like what what went into it, um or where it was coming from, it just it it feels like you're driven by the the expression of you know, your what whatever it is you're kind of like working through. Um mm. and that the sounds or whatever you're choosing to use Sometimes your voice, a lot of times your voice too, in in experimental ways, um, feels like it's it's all supporting your idea. It kind of brings me back to when you were talking about creating artistic briefs and just how I'm sure that can start to inform the way you think about create your creation or the point of inspiration to start something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was feeling that when I was listening more deeply to your music that. Um, it does, um, you know, some electronic music you put on and you you have it sort of as environmental music, right? Like uh, ambient or something that's going to sort of just kind of sit in a certain place in the background. But your music is much more like uh, drawing you in, like wanting you to pay attention, you know? Like you're mm -hmm. uh, feeling like you're almost like storytelling through sound. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like that because um, it's uh, like what you just said. It it um, it speaks to me when I try to explain um, that you could say like the sounds, you know, when they're they're smooth and they're atmospheric, that it's amb ambient music. Sure. But the but the the the, um, the use or the concept of ambient music, you know, like uh, so like Brian Eno and stuff, is that it's in the background. And like you said, it's something that can just be part of the of the the background, and it's not in a, for lack of a better term, it's not intrusive, as in it doesn't like call you in. And that's why for me, there's some music that's uh, it's very intense without being intense, and like the actual <clears throat> the actual nature of the the sounds. You know, it's not like brute force or anything, but it's really intense. And uh, I like what you said with the the storytelling that. Um, it's uh, like an, an, a need to connect to something that's greater than myself, like uh, to create this, uh, this connection. And uh, that's why I, um, there's a lot of, uh, for me, like Dorian scale and like uh, ancient musics, like uh, folk music, it like speaks to me on some kind of 
I, I can't even explain where the feeling comes from, but it feels like it's it's way more than than me than just my existence. Like it goes past generations and speaks of a, a story like that is uh like uh yeah that's that's in my that's in my ancient past mm -hmm. and it connects me to that and so it, it's like creates this timeless uh this timeless sort of uh gateway like it um yeah how mm. can i explain oh i love how you said that because i was i i forgot that i wanted to say i wanted to say something when i was listening to your music but i forgot when we started the stream and you just reminded me again was that when i'm listening to it it feels like you're casting a spell and that's exactly kind of what you were just saying is there's this sort of ancient ritualistic sort of like way that sound and music were used that you can feel really connected to, I think, especially through electronic music. And um, I have a, it's, I do have like a, some life events that really did in, um, open up my creativity and allowed my music to really speak because I, that's, that's why when I when I listen to what I was making ten years ago, uh, it's of course like uh, I appreciate it, but there's this sort of restraint and this um, it's almost like a fear of fully expressing, mm. and I feel like uh, what really what's really open helped me open up our uh, ayahuasca ceremonies over oh. the past. Yes. Uh, maybe you heard of ayahuasca? Because mm -hmm. not everyone. And um, I've heard of it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, like just allowing, uh, like breaking down like the the barriers, you know, the fear of fear and fear of judgment, and and being like authentically myself, you know, and not and not uh, no restraint and no uh, no yeah, just no fear to to express myself. But it just it happened progressively. But I know that that those uh, and especially the the music and the rituals that are involved in these things and the like shamanic retreats, uh, they really, really influenced me because it's the same kind of sound. It's the same kind of uh, mood, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're really lighting me up. I definitely uh, feel very connected to what you're talking about. I don't want to make this about me, so I'm trying to hold it in. But um, <laughs> I, I definitely feel deeply what you're basically like trying to say, because it's so hard to talk about like music. It's hard to talk about music. But um, I, I relate so deeply with this same sort of source energy that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I personally haven't done ayahuasca, but I know people who have, and I feel like I've been sort of like, I'm interested, but it hasn't, I don't want to force that experience, you know? So yeah. maybe it'll happen one day, but um, do you think that your... Um, I guess I'm curious kind of like what, I don't know if I could even answer this question, but you've traveled a lot. Um, and I'm just curious, like what kind of cultural like touch points in terms of like maybe your own, like a lot of people are like, oh, where I'm from, my, my culture is where I'm from. But since you're, you've moved around so much, how you kind of connect those mm. things for yourself. Mm. Um, like in general or for the, for my music? Mm, I, I guess like how, how that informs music maybe um i guess it makes uh it, it means that there's no uh like single source and it's kind of uh malleable and sometimes i'm playing something or i have some i for example i have a track that has like a you know balinese gamelan kind of, mm. of a melody mm -hmm. and it, it like when it when it but it was from a a contact instrument, but uh, when when I was playing it, it just reminded me of of uh, living in that part of the world, and um, I guess uh, I guess actually what it shows very often is that um, even if you have different types of music um, from different cultures, the the as in like the the folk music, uh, maybe it's not the same scales, it's not the same, but but the 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 power of connecting to it mm -hmm. is. Uh, is uh, like one common thing and um, so I have a hard time describing my music to people uh, as in like what it does it sound like because I just say it's organic electronic music but it's I say it has a bit of folk IDM um, but it's uh, 
but yeah, it's a, uh, it's hard to say like uh, where it's from exactly because it's uh, <laughs> influenced mm -hmm. by a lot, of, uh, a lot of travels. Yeah, it makes sense to me that you would have a sense of those threads and sort of that common voice that mm -hmm. you pull together. I mean, yeah, you've experienced a lot of, you know, just a diverse experience of life that a lot of us don't have to pull from. So um, it makes us very intrigued about it. Um, well, I think, uh, tra traveling is fun. Uh, for me, it's traveling is fun now, but I don't want to be moving as like moving as is, is, yeah. is exhausting. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I moved around a lot, um, not to different countries so much, you know, but just around the United States. And it was quite dramatic and actually like played a pretty big role in my childhood, not in a good way. <laughs> and I'm, you know, definitely seeking therapy to kind of like work through some of the trauma, you know, that moving a lot created, you know, so it is a, a big deal, you know, and, and has uh, quite a big impact, you know, in my life at least. And so I can, I can relate with that aspect of your story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you had the same, well, I don't want to like out your trauma, but when, <laughs> when Lily was describing that, like the one thing about the movie that stuck with her the most was that last sort of year of, of high school is like, I was like, well, that's literally, literally what yeah, happened yeah. to you. I mean, it was hard it's not like to like be the like, the deepest thing Sam. that you you, know. you can't let like that has informed you the most of all of the moving was that that mm -hmm. that you didn't get to graduate with your class mm -hmm. and even uh but even going then after that going to university while well, my family was in another continent yeah. like super far and right. um I, I guess at the time i didn't feel like it was a big deal but now looking back it's like i was so alone i was so lonely mm -hmm. and the mo the moves Mm -hmm. uh, like this, or like every time you start over, it's like you you know it's like you know game over, start a game over, start to start a new game. Yeah, uh, it's depressing. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you you don't know anyone again. You start from scratch and you make new friends. So I actually never learned how to uh, develop like long term relationships with people because it it also creates like a stronger sense of identity once you're able to shape your identity somewhere and like maintain that identity and and you know. It, like I was, I was never doing that. I was just leave, leaving every two years, and um, it, it also, I mean, it did have an impact. Like I was more mature in some ways, but in other ways, like emotionally, uh, I had like a lot of work to do on my own as well. And uh, that's yeah. why that's so how ayahuasca helped me a lot because I also had like unresolved issues and and uh, insecurity and so uh, yeah, like you said, uh, um, uh, Jacqueline, like you said that. It's not something that that should be forced because for me like the the, the plant like it, it like called me people say that the plant calls you because you start to become curious and you start doing research about it because you feel like you need to come into contact with it and that's what like that's what happened to me because i needed that that support you know or that nudge mm -hmm. to, to, find, to find the answers yeah wow 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 that's amazing I think I think a lot of people are relating to this or are curious, like you said about. Yeah, the chat's quite explosive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will read it after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, this is a novel at this point. I I need to take time to separately do this. Yeah, just the idea of um, people are just discussing like wh what can you do here and what's legal and all these things. So <laughs> that's that's uh, definitely a lot to explore, but also traveling too and how those things inform each other of like, if you've already had to break out of your own box so much then you're going to be more open to, you know, expanding your consciousness in mm. that way. Just having grown up in a very small town and never moving. <laughs> um, I didn't know what moving was. Uh, mm. And, but I still had this like insane curiosity that nobody around me seemed to have. So I knew I had to get out, like break out of that. But I saw how much being in the same place all the time, never leaving for generations, just mm. keeps you not, I don't know. I don't not not a judgment, but just I, I just felt like there was a lack of curiosity. Mm. Right. Which was hard for me to find like relatability. I get it. Mm. Um, I think 
I just want to, okay, sorry, my mic just did something weird and I didn't want to lose. Yeah, it like, it like cut and then the sound changed a bit. Yeah, and it went <laughs> back, right? That's yep. so weird. Okay, I think we're back. Um, and we're back. Okay, so how do you balance playing live with everything else that you have going on? Uh, like you mean uh, finding time to practice or just playing? Well, yeah, general? like how does that fit into your life? Is it um, something that like, I know for me, like if I'm not playing live, I know we stream too, but you play like physically out, right? Yeah, but not, I have, I think I can count the times I've played live as Lily J on, on like both hands still. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think my first live was in 20, uh, 2018. And then I was kind of, my, my rhythm was like one once or twice a year. Mm. And, uh, and uh, I, I do get, I mean, I'm, I know it's quite common, but I do get very nervous oh. when, they're, when I'm physically in front of people and my voice is shaky. And when I'm doing the live stream, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like, a, uh, it's a really good practice. But I do not have the same level of uh, of uh, stress mm -hmm, <laughs> when I'm exactly. Live. But I'm really excited because I know I want to uh, I want to to get better at that and and explore that more. And this year I'm doing, I, well, I've already done uh, one live in March and um, I have four more this summer. So I'm oh, so oh yeah. now it's yeah that's amazing yeah like, like a, they're like coming more and more often now the the opportunities yeah. and so i like this the, the live streaming helps me practice getting into the mood of you know transitioning between tracks and uh improvising and playing on the spot but um i do have to practice the actual set on the weekends before the the live performance and like uh, i'm playing at a festival a psy trans festival Ooh. in end of june oh, it's in it's on the other side of france it's like the northwest of France, uh, and I had like yeah, I have to take um, well, I took I take uh, one or two days off of work to go there for a long weekend, and um, I just find ways to to uh, yeah, yeah, I'm like I'm, I just plan ahead and make it work <laughs> with Arturia. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that that answers my question that I didn't even realize I was asking is that you know to play live you do have to give yourself that little extra space, take that time off. We were talking about this with Actitech. He was saying how, you know, live streaming has solved so many problems we really didn't even know we had of that thing of like, you have your day job and you have to balance your time and you do have to take those days off to travel to the gig and back and forth and how we live stream, not only do we not have to do any of that stuff, but we also have the chat giving us that real time feedback and building those real <laughs> relationships. Um, but we still miss being in a room with sound because yeah. experiencing sound in a room with people is, uh, I don't like the word spiritual, I don't mean it in that way, but I think it's a, it ties us to this like ancient feeling, let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, um, like a, it's a communion coming together. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I have to say, I have to say that well, I, when I played last, last uh, year at the festival in August, um the what i thought i sounded like versus the recording of what it sounded like i was uh well it, it was a good learning experience because i realized i think i need even though um even though there are the the speakers in french we say the return speakers i don't know how you say it in english again oh like the monitors monitor yeah just the monitors that you have for yourself um uh like that i realize that in some contexts that's not enough especially if you're singing it's, i need to have like a, an ear like something in my ear to hear close up what's going on because mm -hmm. there's a lot of echo there's a lot of uh you know uh interference and, yes. and then the noise of the people as well yeah so that's a really good point that's yeah. something i hadn't thought about in a while the last show we played was last july and that was the first one we played in years and that was that that fresh like oh I'm getting feedback oh I do crazy <laughs> shit with my vocals this isn't gonna work turn them all around I can't have monitors that's fine <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah I hadn't yeah. thought about that in a while um, it's really I mean I love we uh, like improvising together with headphones is I'm like addicted to it at this point yeah. so I don't really know how to you I feel like practicing playing live is like a whole other thing of how to feel the sound it definitely is yeah. 
in yep. the space. But yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. Yeah, playing live is a whole other bag of it is. things. <laughs> I have a question specifically about your streams. Like, do you uh, prep like music like before your stream or is it more like improvisation like it, it's all happening in the moment uh so i have like it's the same way that i play my live shows mm -hmm. i have um i have tracks with my stems of the of my uh yeah i have ableton tracks mm -hmm. with uh, so i have one for the kick one for the percussion two for instrument different instrument parts mm -hmm. the effects and the effect returns also that i ex export from the tracks Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so they're all, you know, broken up uh, and um, I just have one line per track. And uh, so I, I mix the different parts together sometimes. And what I do is uh, I have diff I have several different, I have one like big session that I just called live stream <laughs> uh, 2023 where I have um, really a lot of them like yeah. um, that I recorded. Uh, and then I have... Like I have just made some others recently, one for the drone and beatless, uh, you know, more beatless and drone um, live streams. So, mm -hmm. right, there's no, kick, no percussion mm -hmm. and the effects are a little different. There's, and um, so I just have a few different sessions for different types of streams, uh, but I pretty much um, play around with the levels of the stems. And then I have um, tracks that have for the inputs of the mini freak, the Lyra, the um, uh, Analog Lab, the Artur Arturia's like hub for all the synths, mm -hmm. where I have a playlist. I have a playlist and when I do, I have program changes that I use my controller to to switch between presets. Yep. And uh, and that's it. And then I have my voice and a bunch of macro effects on the voice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really cool, and that sounds. Thanks for breaking that down. It's very effective. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy your streams, and mm -hmm. you. I would say, like, at least from what I've seen lately, like, there's sort of like this more beat-driven style, and then more of an ambient style that I've mm -hmm. I've heard, and I feel like they're kind of two different vibes. Would you agree mm -hmm. with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He wants to be. Um, <laughs> well, well so, I just uh, don't it's like when you talk about art like we said you know it's like hard to talk about and like I don't want to like I just want to keep it open you know like is that something that you vibe with or am I full of shit you know like that that's very possible like with when it comes to someone else's different, art different because also the the it's a different pace so it, it just invites a different mood yes. and uh I am I when I started streaming and watching other people's streams who like make everything from scratch or just are just improvising everything they don't have stems like I do so and I was really admiring that because mm. I felt oh, like you're really putting yourself on the spot a hundred percent because I with when the playback of my stems at least I can fall back on that and I have like something playing um, but and so like lately I've, I've been trying to to do less like at least like transition or use less of the stems and do like uh, I'm trying to increase the ratio of the live stuff and the, the improv you know with the lira with the the mini freak uh, and stems like use the stems as like the secondary thing instead of the primary thing is what I mean mm -hmm. gotcha wow. it's just more interesting yeah. that's really exciting to hear that that's inspiring you to to go in that mm -hmm. direction um i think it, it speaks a lot to what you were saying earlier about that uh feeling of that maybe you get to in your head you know to, when performing mm -hmm. that can make you feel a certain way that's not how you actually feel when you're making music but it's like this other voice that comes in and having your stuff prepared a little bit can help kind of like calm that voice but yeah. when you get to a place where you don't need that as much that's really an exciting place so I'm just like I'm very excited for you. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the voice you mentioned it's like uh, for me it's like the difference. But I don't play the same at all. Like when I'm playing piano, when I'm alone, and when there's someone list watching, it's like it's not gonna be at all the same performance or the same sound. You know, because it's one is like free flow and the other one is I'm thinking about what I'm doing kind of because there's yeah. there's a third there's a second person there or there's another viewer there you know it very much like if a tree right. falls in a forest but no one hears it sort of a thing did it actually mm. fall it's like you can't i can't uh replicate what it's like if you're not there versus when you are yeah 
Like, there right. is a different energy, and I just can't mm -hmm. translate that. I know exactly what you mean. I tell him sometimes that he can't even be in the house. I can't even know that he's in the house. He's like, I'm in another room with noise canceling headphones. And I'm like, it doesn't, I can feel I'm literally the energy. not here auditorily. Like, <laughs> I can feel his, it, just that there's a body. I can just feel yeah, that there's a thinking body in the, in the house. But I also <laughs> completely understand, and I'm pretty similar in some but ways. But that's because so. I, I grew up as like almost like a latchkey kid. So I was alone at home. Like I had free reign all the times, and we had a piano. So I would just come home from school. I'd like race home from school to like, be alone with the piano for as long as I could before anyone came home. Oh, that's so, so cool. Kind of spoiled <laughs> in that way, and so now it's like yeah, ruined were. me. Like I, I need that still. Like I don't know how to simulate it. Mm. It's been hard. Um, Frank wants to know if you go to Synth, Synth Fest, France in Nantes. Did I say that right? I don't think I did. Yes, yeah, yeah, in Nantes. But I went last year. I went to I dem I demoed there last year, and then this year. So it's in uh, it's in April every year, oh, in not, okay. and um, it's uh, I, I, this year I, I wanted um, to give the opportunity to someone else, so my colleague went, but I'll go next year. Okay, next you'll April. go next year, and it rhymes with aunts, not nonts. Not. Not. Yeah, we don't French. We don't pronounce the s, which <laughs> may, which right. makes no sense. But, uh, <laughs> I know. I forgot that when I was reading it. It's like, wait, this is French. Um, thank do you, you George. Do you have a favorite non Arturia piece of gear? Ooh. Uh, yes. Hold on. Let me think. Uh, just piece of gear like a synth or anything. I wanted to take the pressure off the Arturia <laughs> situation, you know, so I just wanted to know if you had a favorite piece of gear non Arturia. Does it have to be hardware? No, it could be uh, hardware, software, like you, you name it, where. Okay, software. Uh, I uh, I love uh, I love the Spitfire stuff. Software. All right. Uh, don't you guys know Spitfire? No. Uh, I do not actually. No, and I'm I'm like, actually I, a I'm pretty going through my files. I'm a pretty big <laughs> software guy. Like I don't like you know I use a lot of hardware in our streams and stuff, but I I definitely use a lot of software as well. So. And you guys should check it out. It's a uh, um, this. Uh, they make they make a huge sample libraries like uh, professional sample libraries for um, sound, making movie soundtracks. Oh sure. Like the BBC oh, orchestra. Or like the, I think I do know what it is. Then is it like an entire like sound yeah. library kind of like Spice or whatever or Splice. Splice. Uh, yeah. That's what I meant. Spice. <laughs> yeah, it's like a company. Um, Spice from. <laughs> It's, uh, from Dune, Dune. <laughs> yeah, this the spice. We the already spice. brought up somebody brought up David Lynch earlier, and we weren't even talking about ayahuasca yet. But uh, they, yeah, one brought up what? Uh, David Lynch and transcendental meditation. Ah, I, don't I know what David, doing. but is that is that like a what so, is transcendental meditation by David Lynch? He is like a proponent of it, and so it's like the thing. It's sort of people think synonymously with him. It's not like he invented it, but oh, yeah? he he kind of is an evangelist for it, if you will, and like does events. And he came to my school when I was in college and I thought he was coming to talk about movies and we were all like itching to ask him questions about filmmaking. And he was like, I'm not taking any questions about art. We're only talking about transcendental meditation. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he laid down the law like that. I get to talk That's about so that badass. so much. This comes up like almost every That's time. how I would want to be. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I'm just looking up the Spitfire audio link for us um, since it comes so highly. They have, uh, if, they have, uh, if you download the Spitfire app, they have the labs. It's called Spitfire Labs. They're all free. They, they're they just sample based. Sample -based oh, uh, Twitter already dropped it. Thank you. <laughs> so how does that compare to something like Output, which I am familiar with? Do you know about uh, Output? This is Spitfire. I, I, I love, um, so I, I love Spitfire. I have Output Arcade by Output. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I am familiar that's, with that. How does it compare to that? Oh, it's not the same because uh, Arcade same. is... Arcade is like you have loop, like sample loops, even like full uh, full uh, phrases on one note. I was not Whereas... a fan of it. <laughs> uh, you were not a fan? I was not a fan, yeah. But that's only because, like, maybe I don't know, maybe I couldn't get it, it to work right or something. Like, I don't know. It just didn't, like, I didn't click with it. Just personally. Yeah. Um, I think it's re it's can be really helpful, like as a as a nudge. Like if you have if you're not inspired and you have no idea of anything, and you find just like one, like one uh, 
you know, melodic riff or one kind of, because it's like a whole, uh, you can like hold one note sometimes and it's like for 10 seconds or something playing. Like that's, right. Uh, but that's not um, anything to do with what Spitfire is. I wasn't no, trying no. to. I wasn't trying to derail us. I was. I'm trying to think of something that I'm familiar <laughs> with that it's similar to. No, it's Spitfire. Spitfire Labs. They have like more classic. It's it's like Contact. You know, it's a. Uh, oh, I mean, okay. they're samples. It's just samples. It's just uh, sample, sample library. Based. Okay. Said, you know, um, sample library, but they have some very uh, what what can I, how can I call it experimental kind of twisted stuff in there. Oh. Uh, Okay. Like siren, siren voices and um, whale sounds, whale whale sounds and like I mean they have some really trippy stuff. It looks <laughs> like the they lab. did a collaboration with BT. <laughs> Always. Uh, yeah, I remember like back in the Ooh. day, oh, yeah. I used I'm to like... <laughs> make fun of BT because he was endorsing everything. Like he literally like <laughs> would be like, I am using insert every piece of gear that exists you know he was the only person he was like that could endorse endorsing anything. like literally everything and so that's kind of my joke and then we went and saw him and it was like oh that was the whole thing what are um, you endorsing i feel like there was another question hold on oh a granular whale song i think that lily should make that yeah she hasn't already she probably has granular whale yeah granular whale because you were talking about whale sounds in the yeah 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 <laughs> Spitfire Lab, yeah, yeah. Um, I just really love. It. I think they have great ideas, uh, but I also use native instruments uh, complete a lot. Also, oh, okay. Yeah, so that they I have, am extremely familiar with. <laughs> like the I have a like Stradivari cello that I use. It's just because because uh, it sounds better than than when I play. <laughs> do you still I, have I, a cello? Yeah, I do. Okay, cool. Yeah. I remember you saying that. Um, did you go to Karnak Music Fest? What is that? C A R N A C. We don't know what that is, Roger. So sorry, but it sounds like that they is... are excited about music festivals again. Karnak is in France. I've never heard of a music festival there. No. Ooh. <laughs> no. Does a synth exist if it doesn't have a Richard Divine preset? Okay, that's funny. <laughs> Um, uh, for the last like twenty years, not really. Yeah, whales whales come up a lot in our streams too. I think it's because they also are musical creatures. We have a lot of you know whale song research. There's this amazing documentary. I'm just gonna recommend. I think it's um, I think it's on Netflix, but it was the most recent whale song documentary that's come out that I know of. That was. Uh, a very deep dive of people like going really to like pretty remote places to find that you can use the whale it, like they're decoding what they all mean mm. you know and oh, then, yeah? and then using like playing them underwater to the whales to see what they do in response to, to like I figure out what they I almost forgot what you're talking about until just now Oh yeah you don't, yeah you no you that? you finally jogged my memory yeah like I know exactly what you're talking about That was crazy cuz it like that documentary is a lot about sound design mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like Super analyzing sound waves yeah. Um, so anybody who's interested in what we're talking about now would definitely like that. I'll try to remember what it is and throw it in the Discord if I remember. Um, but it was like this group of women who went to this remote island and they had decoded some of the whale sounds. They've been able to prove what some of them mean. Right. And then use them back to them to like by have conversations. They proved it by communicating and getting consistent results back. I was just like blown away. Yeah. Wow. Which just feels trippy. Like, should we be bothering them? But it feels like crossing a line. I think like... it had to do with them. They were trying to solve like a problem that they're like helping them yeah, find their yeah, breeding yeah, yeah. ground or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. It was for a oh. helpful cause. Karnak is in Britonia. Yeah, yeah, Britannia. Oh, Britannia. Britannia. Yeah. Okay. And it happened a few weeks ago. Oh. Um, that has like stone hinges and stuff. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. We've never been to France, so you're really like lighting up our desire to go there the way you're describing. I've been everything. to France, thank you. Oh, you have been. I'm sorry. You went to Paris <laughs> for like a day. Okay. <laughs> but I did go. Like I have technically been on the soil. Yeah. Yeah, like like talking to your like meowing at your cat to see if they understand. I know people talk to their animals with like actual human language. And yeah. the animals will kind of get used to those things, but the idea of trying to match their meowing to talk to them the way to try to understand what they're saying is is 
that's the trippy part. Mm. Makes so she tries, she yeah. tries to imitate what I'm saying. You know, like you say, like something with three syllables and the cat repeats three yes. meows. That's you know? right, they do do that. I forgot about that. I grew up with cats. Um, they are fascinating to me. Never had a cat. I'm a dog guy. <laughs> Well, yeah, dog dogs. Good. Yeah, and uh, I had a lizard. I had a, an iguana when I was in high school and enjoyed that experience. Iguanas are yeah. like, man, they're like, you'd think that they're um, like just like cold and like kind of like gruesome. No, no, I've already pet one and they're extremely, extremely warm. Yeah. It's like, it's, like, it's like when people are surprised with snakes as well, you know, they think it's going to be like all like cold and scaly and stuff, but it's uh, it's not at all. Well, they're very, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, literally warm, yes, but I just meant, like, you just think they're, like, kind of, like, you know. Well, their personality, too. Their personalities are really, like, you know, sketchy or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're actually really, like, sweet. I, I felt like I had, like, a pretty <laughs> a pretty good bond with, with mine, so. Our, I mean, um, you feed them a couple, like, yellow squash and they're friend for life, you know. <laughs> yeah, once they figure out you give them food, then, like. You know, there's a relationship building. Um, oh, gosh, what was I going to say? Oh, the person who cuts our hair has a tortoise that they sometimes bring to the salon. And we get to hang out with their tortoise. And <laughs> I'm obsessed. I just think that's the greatest. I mean, there is something about an, an animal that can, like, talk to you in a way, like the meowing or the barking or whatever. And so it, it does, I think that's why those animal, the reptiles feel cold is because they don't, make any sound they don't make yeah i mean we're like what's wrong be, like what that how, might be how? part of it there's like they're not they're not they don't like sound. whimper wait or, i think i don't think i've ever thought about this before and it's really freak it's like or happily what? bark <laughs> wait a minute they just, they just open their mouth a different different varying amounts yes exactly <laughs> no that's true they they're just sort of like <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Yeah, so to go That's from their like only move. reptile to whale, I mean, the whales feel human almost at that point, if you really think about it that way. It is true. Like the, I mean, just the idea that something is like communicating back with you. Uh, no, not even with like just having their own culture. Right, having their own. Yeah, but even they've uh, like whales, like their their brains actually have bigger zones of empathy than humans, like the bigger uh, ability <laughs> to like sense things and. And uh, like they have big, like it's more developed than humans. Yeah, I believe it. I definitely believe that. Just by the little bit of whale documentary watching I've been doing. We did go to Hawaii recently for the first time, and we got to oh. go do a little whale watching. That man, just being around large groups of large whales is like, it really shakes your sense of being the superior, you know, mm. race on the earth. You know, they're so big. They're so big. <laughs> like dinosaurs yeah they remind me of dinosaurs which is always like so wild to think about but there were dinosaurs in the ocean too what we would consider dinosaurs anyway this is going way off of music i love it um <laughs> let's see oh Animals, boy hawaii well, we'd it, love it, to go there yeah absolutely back. dwoger you gotta go <laughs> i just want to like spend a few minutes on like you know if there's any like tropical place that you're gonna like go that's gonna be sort of like a big deal an expensive uh excursion make it hawaii mm. well we really had a beautiful experience because we had someone to visit there um, i've never been have I've a been buddy to... in hawaii yeah have a friend have who a lives good there. friend in hawaii <laughs> like that's what you should do yeah oh so of, of all the places that you've traveled uh you said malaysia was like where you felt like you really belonged and you were excited to graduate there. Yeah. Is that where you, I don't know, what question do I want to ask? I don't want to make you say like, what's your favorite place in the world? But I'm just curious if there's places that you really have a fondness for or places you wish you had stayed longer. Uh, well, Malaysia, I can talk about Malaysia because uh, I do, I do, and I did have a fondness for that place because especially at the age that, that I was, I was, which was, um, 14, well, 13, 14 to 16. Mm. Uh, uh, I, at that age, you want to like kind of break free and mm. do your own, thing, get out of the house. And there was already like, first of all, it, it's summer all year. 
and there's already that sense of even just physical freedom of always you always wear you can wear the same thing every day you don't have, you don't care um there's swimming pools everywhere yeah. uh and also uh because my parents would you know they would give us like a bit of um a bit of money a bit of pocket money to go out uh, but the the money that they would give us it was worth way more in malaysia you know like the as in for for taking a ta uh, taking a cab to go out and uh, we just had a sense of freedom with very little you know you could with little you could do so much more than if i had been in the states or in france yeah and so we had this so, like so they didn't factor that in like my parents would have been like <laughs> giving me like <laughs> nothing you know they would have been like here try to survive off this <laughs> no they didn't, they didn't uh they didn't realize and they also did, i guess they didn't realize like where we were that we were going to nightclubs and <laughs> we, were going, we were smoking a hookah you know um we i like when i think about it now it's insane because i was 14 which is you know and we were smoking hookah for hours after school and then going to nightclubs so i mean that's why when i once i did arrive at at um at uh, university at 18 and every, a lot of people were like yeah party for kind of for the first time and it felt like i'd already done that in malaysia you were like and, been uh, there done that <laughs> yeah <laughs> a different way, but it, it was but beyond that stuff it it just was a sense of a sense of freedom of movement and a freedom of of uh yeah just it was just um you're like i already like, have a drug habit <laughs> <laughs> like a just kidding but, yeah. Harsh, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah no i mean like uh they, they didn't id anyone we were visibly oh, 13 wow. kids 14 year old kids and there was no IDing going on and there were kids drinking and stuff so it was like a bit too unhinged I guess a little unhinged uh, oh that sounds <laughs> that sounds awesome though oh. that's like that's the way to do being that age that's, I, I mean that's say. incredible I mean it sounds like you had a good time and it was like really shaping who you were I can't mm -hmm. even imagine and then you went to Japan from there I mean I just and then wow. yeah just for two just for two years for finishing high school wow. uh but it's interesting because Japan was uh, also uh, an amazing experience because it was it's very safe. So it it also added something really uh, really great for when we would go out um, as teenagers. Or my parents didn't uh, you know we didn't have to they didn't feel like they had to worry or be super careful uh, because it's like just safe in terms of you know there's no there's like all the petty crime and stuff. Uh, just has a very low rate of that, and uh, we would just go to Kentucky until the morning and like ride our bikes and stuff to go home. Uh, but the place, the place today where I really do feel still uh, nostalgia, like that I want to go back, is Montreal and just Canada mm -hmm. in general, because there's just a, a vibe there that I like for me is unmatched. Um, oh wow! I can really feel it when I when I'm uh, like for example. Come going from Montreal to to France, it just all of a sudden feels um, like the the like the vibe is less open, less uh, like less laid back. Like over there, I feel like I can really be myself on the street or anywhere, and and uh, there's no judgment. There's absolutely wow. everyone is like you know just being themselves. <laughs> I have been to Montreal, but I wasn't old enough to like really experience like what it really feels like to like live there. Um, I've never been, but it felt close. like it felt like being in Europe mm. more than other places I've been. In. I have I heard know. that. Yeah. Someone said, "Do you think France is judgy?" <laughs> I think I think that um, I think that just like in any country, it really depends where you are. Uh, but it, like, what makes me feel that, or the um, there's kind of a brutal arrival back in France, and it's just the airport in Paris is really depressing. <laughs> just that it's just that airport when you're like, you know, you go on your vacation somewhere, and you're like, kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, like you've been able to to disconnect and experience new things and optimism and stuff, and then you come back and you're in this, it's like very gray and very. I don't know, Oh, it's, it's not just like a, a heart-shaped airport. It's just like <laughs> oozing with love. But I mean, I mean, really, it's, I mean, 
uh, I've been in many airports and this one's particularly grim mm -hmm. and it just feels like like kind of down you kind of down to come back but then I mean then if you travel to somewhere else in France where it's not like that then it's you know it's not like that everywhere it's just, it's it's like um you know when you visit the capital you can't say that you know the the rest of the country which is oh, so yeah. different that's a good perspective to put it into because I grew up in the DC area and um it's nothing like anywhere else <laughs> yeah very very different um wouldn't say it represents how the rest of the country is at all so mm. that makes a lot of sense to me now that when I think mm. of France I will not just think of Paris yeah and then to talk about where I live now mm -hmm. if it's whether it's judgy or not that's why like here it's uh, everyone, uh, we we have a joke here that people dress like in Quechua, which is a like kind of the uh, the equivalent of the, of American um, what brand like Timberland, you know, like the mm. uh, and what is it like Patagonia? So do you like boots? Oh, Patagonia. Oh, yeah, Patagonia. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. outdoors, outdoors. Everyone's wearing, everyone's wearing workout outdoor outdoorsy clothes. Everyone's dressed like they're going on a hike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's. It's not like you're downtown and everyone's dressed nice, you know. Like nobody cares. And if if you're overdressed, then you, people know you're not from from here. You're just visiting, because the people who are dressed nice, they're not the people who are from here who live here. They're tourists. Like Ooh, uh, now we kind of that kind of vibes. Too. Yeah. <laughs> a, I feel similarly about the place we live now, and it's but it's more along the lines of like whether you're dressing like for the weather you know mm -hmm. like for example yeah. when it's really cold you know like yeah. the idea of not wearing like the bare minimum that you think you need to like survive this level of cold is like you know pretty much like unacceptable like for example like if I were to go to the supermarket and I was gonna wear a like you know a winter coat you know like a winter first, coat first snow, and it's like it's actually heavy. like 15 degrees, like, they would probably expect, you know, like, that I would be uh, less Ooh. dressed. This is a very long-winded way of saying that when you live somewhere that's always cold all the time, there's generally a sense that, like, people are wearing shorts till the last absolute second, and, like, you look crazy when you're all, like, geared out. I think, long story <laughs> short, I typically get judged for wearing a jacket in the gr grocery store. <laughs> it's cold where you are in Indiana? Well, yeah. right now it's like a hundred degrees. Yeah, so, not now. Uh, it's a very harsh weird, summer. Uh, the swing. But in, in winter, it gets in winter. It's like really below freezing. Absolutely, yeah. It was like I think the coldest it got was like negative twenty-two here, but that's Fahrenheit, so I don't know how to translate that. But um, I have no clue what that is. I have but no it very uh, the coldest I've ever experienced. Um, it it gets extremely windy, so it's like a uh, sort of a wind. Time. Minus thirty. Minus thirty Celsius. Okay. That's like that's like Montreal on the worst day. Yeah, the worst, yeah. Like it, the... it was like this stretch where they were basically like, "Hey, you're not going to be able to run your stuff, like your heat, because we're all going to be running it so hard, and like maybe you should think about, you know, wearing some layers in the house and turn." You know, it was like a really scary time. It was, it was this like, idea wow. where they're like encouraging people to wear less layers, you <laughs> yeah. know, some or layers. I'm just like, what? Like, like uh, I can't get, I can't survive. That? Like, I am, like, putting on well, my, like, get through it <laughs> face at the grocery store only wearing, like, a minor hoodie when it's, like, fucking freezing out. Yeah, getting get some of that stress <laughs> out about our town. But he's from Florida, so he's, like, a lizard. And we live, like, basically, uh, I'm a lizard. like, we're, we're, you know, just a, a little bit from the border of Canada where we okay. are now so to go from florida to this he's having a hard time so thank you thank you everyone for holding space for our our issues with the weather <laughs> i just constantly all all that my main theme here is that i'm constantly feeling judged by the people of my town for the way that i am not dressing appropriately for the weather and it's usually i'm dressing on their terms they have a whole culture i'm dressing warmer than i'm supposed to be for the weather and they're getting and i can feel it i can feel their like looks piercing at me like it's knives. that feeling of like you're reminding them <laughs> that it's cold you know yeah it's almost <laughs> like don't 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 wear that you know like you'll remind me how cold it is right yeah, now by wearing that it and it'll piss me off i think that's what it is fish yeah yeah so um 
So when you speak about Montreal, we're like, oh, we're not that far from there. It sounds lovely there. <laughs> um, but I do want to um, make sure that everybody got your links. I have to remind mm -hmm. myself how much later it is where you are, too. So I apologize if I haven't been keeping track of time. Very it's good. The good, the, good thing, the good thing is that I'm working from home tomorrow. So I have like an hour more to, to oh. sleep. That's perfect. Oh, oh, this this uh, worked out then, the, the time. Yeah, and it's like the Thursday nights, I usually finish some stuff really late, but then I know that I can, I, I don't have to wake up as early, so it's fine. It well, works then out. we'll go the Mr. X route and, you know, stream for a couple of more hours. Like, you got a couple more hours left in you? We can keep That's going. That's so funny. I know. He always tries to play chicken with us to see, you know, to get us to stream longer. What was the first you know? operating system that you used on the that? computer? What is he playing? What is playing chicken? Oh, sorry. As I said that, I was like, that doesn't translate. I learned when, when we went to Berlin, I kept saying things that, and people were looking at me like cross-eyed, like, what does that mean? And I was like, oh, that's an American thing. I didn't realize like it just a turn of phrase that doesn't translate. But, um, basically like he's waiting for us to, to like break first, you know, like if we have him on oh. stream, he'll just, he'll act like, oh yeah, I could go for like seven hours. Like I'm not going to break. <laughs> You know, to try to see, like, when we'll, we'll break first, so. There's never a time when, like, he's going to tap out. Yeah. He will, you tried already? He will, he will beat us every time. There's no, there's no doubt about that. That, maybe it's a game, so I'm calling you out. Sorry, Mr. X, <laughs> for calling you out. Hey, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. But it's for a good reason. No shade, you like to stream, man. We're saying you, you have like the stamina, that we don't have the stamina that I can't even, I didn't realize that. You go hard. Uh, people will stream, you know, they'll do like six hours or they'll stream all day like it's their job or they'll stream for like 24 hours. And I'm just like, wow. That's... I start to get, um, I start to get rusty after two hours, two and a half hours. I start, that's, that starts, that's my breaking point where I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to do something else now. I agree. I think it's just a matter of needing to change things up for myself. Like I don't want to do anything I don't want to stay focused on anything for that long because I like to take a breath. Get a we go to a museum. First time there could be the Louvre hour. <laughs> you know, like we're fine. Don't we've, us. we've got it. We've got it all mapped out. We've got it completely scoped out. We're good. We're ready to move on to the next thing. You know, like that's just <laughs> how we roll. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's funny. Mr. X said, I don't go out often, but I always close the bars. So he's admitting that he's owning this thing we're calling out him out about so before i forget i think i put it in here already but everyone um let me do like a proper shout out since you're a twitcher we can do that um that let's see will it let me no i don't think it will anyway i wanted to put your twitch link in here so that everyone can follow you so make sure you're following lily on twitch because she does stream regularly and you're gonna get to know her music and her process better that way because I saw like you you're everyone in the chat is just like I want more of what Lily has going on so Absolutely. that's gonna be the best way I would say right do yourself and a treat definitely go to her Bandcamp or Spotify or both whichever you prefer I put those links there as well um, so that you can enjoy her music and support her music as well and that way I'm sure you'll be able to be connected with her to find out if she's playing in any of these festivals you're asking about when she's gonna play live what she's up to when she's streaming, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you're getting plugged into that because you're gonna want you're gonna want more. I know you will. Thank uh, you so much. Yes. <laughs> um, so any last questions? Make sure you get them because we're gonna let Lily go. Um, it is much later there than it is here. So I know some of you are tuning in and some of you left and had to say goodbye. So goodbye everyone that left already. But yeah, it's getting late um, over in Europe now <laughs> for anyone who's tuning in. It's yeah. See, Mr. X is being cheeky again. It's only midnight. Mr. X kind of came out of the woodwork too. Like I didn't even know you were here, and then yeah. all of a sudden you were talking shit about him, and you didn't know he was in the chat. All of a sudden, you pop up out of nowhere. How's no, it going? He's always in the chat. Mr. X is everywhere, as we both said. We don't know how he found us, but he's everywhere. It's the all-seeing eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true though, and that's that's badass, honestly. Yeah. To be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for everything you do, Mr. X. Too. Yes, we appreciate you. We're only doing this because we appreciate you. Yes. It's true. You did. You made us. You made us all. No, I do think that um, 
we were enjoying Twitch, you know, before we knew about the Shrimp Guild, but then it's like life before the shrimps and life after the shrimps. It's a very clear cut division. <laughs> very clear cut in terms of our enjoyment of the community aspect of what's going on with Twitch and live streaming and yeah. honestly just like being connected with so many people in so many different places in the world. It's like the difference between going to a party where you don't know anyone and then going to a party where you know everyone. <laughs> and it's like night and day. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so the, I just wanted to shout that out because that's, you know, sort of the reason that we got, even got connected to have you on, to even know each other. So. Do, we, do, we know, uh, do we know how many people are in the guild now? <gasps> I think we know. Uh, Toto said something like, it's there's like about a hundred to 170 like active streamers who will like participate in Synthon, you know that sort of activity level. But I think it's like over a thousand in terms of actual like people who might be in the Discord or know like what it is. But not everybody's streaming on Twitch. We mm. figured that out because when we went to Superbooth and like that was like the main conversation we were having with people, even outside of the tent, was just like, what's the Shrimp Guild all about? Or I actually, people would say, I know about it. I'm in the Discord, but I just can't figure it out. And we're like, well, are you Twitch streaming? And they're like, no, I'm on YouTube. And I'm like, well, that's probably why. Because <laughs> the mm. main thing about it is that we get to raid each other and support mm. each other through the platform. And I think that's so crucial. Absolutely. To yeah. feel connected. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's that was my main point. Was just that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't know each other. So I wanted to make sure we shouted them out. But let me throw your links in here one more time, everybody. But Bardic was the one that found us that's initially. True. Yeah. We didn't get a chance to talk about that, but he's sort of known for finding people as well. Mm -hmm. Through uh, through Twitch. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we I were just hanging out on it was Twitch. A, mm -hmm. We watch movies on Saturday nights on Twitch. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty weird, it's not for everyone, but <laughs> those of us who love it, we love it. Uh, so he caught us because of that because he thought it was so weird, you know, and then found out we were sent people. I don't think he even knew that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he is. Yes, we call him the Boba Fett of the Golden Shrimp Guild. <laughs> um, if that reference makes sense, we call him. Uh, That's so funny. Bardic Fett is is. Bardic yeah, Fett. Name. Oh, play us out, uh, Connecticut. I don't know that Lily has a uh, things like audio wise set up to play. That's a lot to ask. Yeah, but I. <laughs> but you could maybe show us a little. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can. Well, I mean, I can because I'm I'm on my so the the laptop I'm using now to talk to you guys is. The one I use OBS on normally. Oh, I'm yeah. using, using two computers, so it's this is the this is where I stream. I mean, this is where I'm playing. Mm -hmm. and that's where the, the action happens. That's the action, and then that's my this is my controller. Oh, nice. Uh, that's where the computer is with you guys and OBS, and then there's the Poly Brute and the Lyra. Beautiful. And, uh, and then my sound card's down there. It's not like a it's not like a real um, studio desk, but it, for now it's it's enough. Yeah, I like how you have it set up. But, but my but my mission this summer uh, is to soundproof my room, because there's not like you know you guys have the I see the cartons on the, the things on the walls, but I mean I know what you're referencing, but yeah, that's all for show. <laughs> it's not soundproof yeah. at all. It's literally just it's so like. Just shit on the wall. wall. It's <laughs> shit on the wall. But yes, but that's what you mean is you're gonna do the treat. You're gonna acoustically treat it as best as you can. Yeah, I need to because it's like there's it's quite um, there's quite a lot of reverb and like the sounds kind of bouncing a bit too much. It's like a little bit hard to to hear precise stuff from my monitors. So I just need to add some nice looking stuff on the on the walls and the ceiling to absorb. Mm, yeah. after, after, like later this summer, I think I'll do that like in July or August. Yeah. Nice. Well, that'll be mission. an evolution. We'll get to see it on Twitch. Nice little project. Yeah. Sweet. Well, that's got to be a good feeling because you talked. I could I could start a whole another conversation. I'm going to try not to. But because you moved around so much, you probably didn't get to like settle into a space as much. It sounds like you've been here a while. So that's cool that you get to do that. This, this apartment, uh, with the help of my parents, I bought it last year. Oh so my like, 
good. Meaning like, uh, like settling here, like, you know, like I feel like I have a home, you know, now it's a home and like that there's, there isn't that feeling because I've always had that feeling before of like, oh, like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good here, but I shouldn't get too comfortable because I'm going to move. Yeah. It was always like in the back of my head that this is not permanent. So there's no point in making an effort to make fr- like make good friends to to really make an effort to to grow my roots somewhere whereas now I, I feel like like I can just like I can uh, fully relax and stay here I don't have to go anywhere if I don't want to you know and it's like the first time in my life that I have that so oh my god congratulations I'm so happy to hear that that's my amazing. my heart it yeah. goes out to that you know the person in me that has moved so much like completely understands that and you know, that's what uh, yeah. our current residence is supposed to be, but I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> We're having a hard I don't know time. if we made the right choice. <laughs> how, long, how long have you guys been there? Uh, just about four years, which is okay. crazy. Because it's just basically the amount of COVID time that there's been. Mm-hmm. Just like, we literally have just been here yeah. during Three COVID. Three and a half, four years, yeah. yeah. But it is also the longest we've ever lived in, in, in a, a, a structure. Space. Yeah. Not, not a place, but like a structure, yeah. Which is yeah super fucked so up, it definitely yeah. does something to you in terms of like the continuity of your music creation and like being able to like pick your project up and, and come back to things because you're not being distracted by having to start your life uh, over mm-hmm. yeah, yeah you're not being interrupted and you can actually thrive in one direction <sighs> yeah momentum that is can beautiful. set in <laughs> that's beautiful i love how you, you actually get that. a little momentum well, thank you yeah. so much for sharing this time with us. I'm so inspired and oh. just so happy to get to know you more. And um, it's just like in, when I listen to your music, it'll really enrich that whole experience for me. So I'm so glad that we're connected. Yeah, I'm stoked for the next stream. So thanks for having me. And uh, anytime, anytime you want to chat, Aww. you can do it again. Yes, we always like to say, like, we're are we officially synth friends now? <laughs> Yeah. I think it's yeah. I don't want to assume you. We'll can... let the cat out of the bag too. We're all over Facebook, you know. So you can <laughs> yeah, hang out with us on Facebook. on Facebook. We could be We're Facebook <laughs> friends, you know. <laughs> sure. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Send lots of love to Lily, and we'll be uh, seeing you uh, around Twitch. Yeah. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care. See you. Bye. Oh, friends. What a chat that was. I need to bring the chat back. I lost it. So fun. I lost the chat. Hold on. Oh, here it is. (laughs) It just moved a little bit. That was incredible. Down to the right. Yes. Very cool stream chat thingy, Connecticut. Thank you for being here. Yes. Oh, I I thought it was awesome too, Mr. X and Mr. Spock. I think it was a lot of all of you here in the chat being so into everything that we were talking about and getting to like help support the conversation was like so awesome. Like giving our synth friends love from the chat always feels good for us as like hosts, you know what I mean? Like we want to be good hosts to everybody and have them have a good experience. So you can give yourselves a pat on the back for being amazing as well. Um, and thank you for being here for this. Um, I've lost, (laughs) I lost track of what episode we're on. So actually I'm not very good at being like sentimental. I'm really good at being nostalgic, but not sentimental. So I have a hard time doing those things of like knowing when the anniversary of when we started the stream was or knowing how many episodes deep we are, like how many months we've been doing it so that we can celebrate those milestones. And Twitch is like all about that. So it's a relationship uh, bonus. Maybe you're better at it. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm I, it's just not like that part of my brain just never developed. And I feel like if I try to force it, it makes me feel like. Bad yeah, I would say I'm the it. sentimental one, and I'm not that sentimental, so... I ran out for sugar in the middle, but heard you in my car. Connecticut, that's so crazy! Oh my god, I know, our phones are just following us everywhere, right? I love that Bluetooth technology! <laughs> the idea of GSG expanding to other platforms sounds so chaotic to me, but that's why I'm not the visionary behind the Golden Shrimp Guild, because that <laughs> freaks me out. But I know Actitech is always full of new ideas. Yeah, this is great. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of what this is going might have on. been one of the um, most verbose chats in a while. Yeah, this was great. I think um, here's the thing: Lily J is amazing, and obviously we already knew she was amazing because we met her at Superbooth. But she's beyond. You know what I mean? 
I mean, you just get you just get the vibe from someone that they have a lot to share and a lot of depth depth to them. Depth is a good word. That when it comes to Lily, yeah. I just feel like we could have gone for like three more hours, but I'm trying to be conscious of the fact that it's midnight over there. Yeah. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, I. <laughs> I wanted to tell you all that we'll be back on Saturday for uh, movie night, which is what we were just talking about with Lily, and. It's also going to be, talking child. about like being sentimental, it's also our freaking wedding anniversary on Saturday. <laughs> Speaking of uh, oh sentimental. Gosh. We both, we were like, should we still do movie night or should we do something special for our anniversary? And we're like, uh, movie night kind of sounds more fun. It's kind of a date night. Like, if we don't do that, we'll feel sad. So I think we should do movie night instead. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have something nice for dinner, maybe. But you know how our issues are with living in this town that, like, we... Every time we go out to eat to have, like, a special dinner, it, like, ends up being a situation that doesn't it ends up go being well a for some show. whatever reason. So we've kind of just, like, surrendered and been like, cooking at home is really fun. Yeah. So I feel like when we try to go out on special occasions, again, it's just, like, too much pressure, and it's not that fun. I like a spontaneous thing. Yeah, yeah, same here. Rocky Horror Newlywed Movie. Yeah, so the... <laughs> I was in such a weird mood today, picking the movies for the for the vote. But um, if you go to our Discord, you can see what movies are up for the vote for this weekend for our anniversary movie night stream. Anniversary so that's what movie it's gonna night. Be. So if you want to hang out with us to watch a weird movie on our anniversary uh, and probably drink this beer, let's take a poll to see <laughs> whether will. or not Jack really wants me to do a movie on. He her doesn't movie. believe me that I'm being genuine. That I don't care if we go. No, I, I do. I really do. I know that it's just not because of me, but because of him. He's like worried that he's misreading something, but I'm being honest. Oh, well, you know, it's kind of a, a stigma for me oh, to be. Oh, it's more of the cultural stigma. Extra, you know. That's too gender concerned. conforming for me. I can't handle right. that. <laughs> I get it. And we're in, you know, just a very our own deal relationship. And there that's you go. Cool. There you go. Yeah. We do. We watch movie nights with our friends for our anniversary. That's hey. more fun. No one's so, judging. No shade. I look forward to everyone picking the weirdest movie possible for us to watch. And maybe we'll have cupcakes or something. Should we do that? <laughs> should we, Should we like, put a candle in a cupcake? <laughs> 17 candles. Red for, velvet. Um, but what I really wanted to say was that starting next week, we're going to be streaming on the reg. So... If you want to hear more music from us... If you want to hear some sci-fi breakbeats akin to Strychnine... Maybe maybe you're new here, but if you're not, <laughs> you'll remember that when we started Twitch, we were doing it every day at 7 a.m. and 4 p.m., I think is what it was. There's hardly anyone that was around for oh, those days. That era was crazy. The first like six months of streaming, we would stream twice a day for like two or three hours at a time. In the early, like, we would wake up and we would just start streaming. And then after we had done our day, we would stream again. It was real loose. I literally can't real remember. Real low brow. I literally cannot remember. We were literally like. What we were even doing. We're going to copy that and paste insane. this MIDI pattern in Pro Tools now. It was because you were doing a lot of, like, menu diving and, like, sample banking. I was just literally sampling stuff in the MPC-60 back there. And, <laughs> like going through the like we're like moving the camera from like sampler to yeah. sampler and like i mean maybe people are into that we were creating we but were we were literally showing like yeah. every little step of everything that we were doing it was like you know a class it was fun because it was what we were doing anyway so we thought well that's what we should stream is like we're producing more music and we're trying a new way of producing it and it's all dollars obama's weed man i, I was hoping oh, yeah, you'd say that days. i was hoping you would say that because there's still some of us here some of you survived that and era. i was hoping that danielle would also say something because you were there that's and so funny that was the fun times right it was fun times the bagels. Oh my god, Obama's oh, I was literally talking about that today before we started the stream. Oh my gosh. Morning conversations. Oh my god. Bagel would be in the morning, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? We were doing it every day, twice a day. That was just because we were like, let's we're like we wanna figure Twitch out, so let's just go all in and just be insane about it so that we can figure it out really fast. And then now here we are. So now that we've uh, created the vortex and it's live we are back to being more streaming. Cause that really took us out for the past couple months to build that and learn like web design basically so that we could build it. <laughs> I just really needed it to be something that I could manage myself. I needed it to not be something I had to use somebody else to help me do. So we that needed was our thing. forever platform. Our so forever now that place. that's done, now we can start filling it with music. Not that there isn't yeah. back catalog stuff that it's I'm gonna going fill it with, to be but 
new things to go in there is what it was for. So that's why we're switching back to now having the live stream schedule again. So I think it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So movie night and then we're off to the races next week. This is the, something we've like set as a challenge for ourselves um, to move forward with our music production. So <sighs> that's the goal. That's what we're going to be doing. So we hope you all join us for the ride. It's going to be wild. You've done bagels for an anniversary before. Actually, Danielle, I think uh, we're just going to take this whole weekend as our anniversary weekend and we're going to eat all the bagels we can find. We're going to go to that bagel spot that we found. <laughs> and everybody knows what the fuck we're talking about. Oh, we, finally, that... we finally found a bagel place and they're steamed. <laughs> was, oh, it's the weirdest was, shit ever. Who was part of that bagel conversation. So weird. I'm but sorry. it's decent enough. My family is from Brooklyn and I know what a bagel is and it's not a steamed pile of mush. But... To get a fresh bagel, even if it's steamed, I'll take it. Set up cameras everywhere and have a musical Truman show. That's basically what's going to happen, Celluloid. I mean, that's basically what we were doing. I think it's going to be a little bit less that because you need, you know, trim trim the fat as much as we can. You it's going to definitely be splitting the difference. There might be some like, hey, let me try to find a new brick beat and chop it up right now. and like. But yeah, the goal would be that it's music creation. It's, it's uh, us... Uh, if you kind of know how, like, our origins of how we started this project, we just free improvised. So the goal would be that it's going to be more of that, like, free improvising with chat, uh, recording to tape. That's kind of what we were doing before. So we'll see kind of where it falls. It's going to be an evolution. We're going to get to figure it out together. Let's just say that. It's funny that you say that. Oh, my God. You just conjured the return of Strychnine. Celluloid. Are they reading our minds when we're not on stream? I literally made that joke earlier today. I said, I think you need to bring back Strychnine and start DJing. <laughs> uh, there may be some of that. And I said, you should just call yourself Strychnine still because you never were. It was well, I've already named thing. myself yeah, already as a DJ, yourself. so why would I name myself anything else? Mm -hmm. There's not really a better name out there. Really, I just think it's you know? funny that you said that. Wow. Celluloid is reading our brainwaves <laughs> to make jokes. I'm not I, mad. I appreciate I like it. it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. You understand oh, my soul funny. if you're making jokes about Strict Nine. That's amazing. Oh, oh, <laughs> we're getting a second. I, I, we second that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope everyone. I'm going to be sampling some old Strict Nine records for sure. Ooh, we, yeah, we still have them. We could show our vinyl collection. Oh my god, Mr. X. You did <laughs> not. You did not. Just Germanify that. Oh my god, thank you all for being here. I hope that you were as like uplifted and enriched by our conversation with Lily as we were, because it felt really magical for us. Um, yeah. Really stoked to know her um, and, and her music. It's one thing to like have somebody share some music with you online, or even to listen to somebody that you're finding. It's another to have this kind of conversation and then listen to their music. It really does something. It really does something. To the something, enjoyment of it. You know, and then you try to unlearn the fact that you know they're they've gone on ayahuasca journeys and you, don't, you can't you don't you can't unlearn it that's what that's what informs it that's what makes it better that just adds to the story yes mr x it brought the whole super booth vibe back you could tell we it were just like, adds to the visual <laughs> we were like beating with with the heart of super booth um but we also booked our knobcon stuff today so that was that was very prescient with us so yes this is gonna be great we're in a season of creation we're really stoked to release more music that's um, completed because as you know our problem is that we make a lot of music and we don't it's like being made and like we can't figure out how to put it out and share it so that's... we've had album art made guys yeah we have a lot we have a that lot. i'm so <laughs> stoked on and i can't wait to oh share i just want to drop that. the artist who made the album art for us that is going to be our next album hopefully maybe if we can get our shit together is so dying to share it and we we're like you can't share it yet. yeah we're like that's not our vibe <laughs> like it's been so long he's like why can't i show people my process i'm like we're not ready i said yeah. we we're gonna be ready and we're not ready <laughs> so having our regular twitch schedule making music like you know the focus again and putting it out for you to experience and help us figure that out is kind of what we're going to be going for moving forward so hopefully you're game for that <laughs> You'll let us know if you are. What was that new sci-fi show we watched? Like the Tomorrow, whatever. Like what was the name of oh, it? Oh, oh God. Hello Tomorrow. Hello Tomorrow. Hello Tomorrow. 
This is starting to feel like we have a Hello Tomorrow scheme going about doing new music. What does that mean? Like, they talk we don't actually have new music. Oh, because that shows about a scam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're, like, egging it. We're, we have, like, this elaborate tale about all the new music that we have, you know, like, and, you know, we even have the Vortex and, like, all this stuff, but, like, you know, there's a chance that it could be completely BS. Uh, no, it's true. We have real music. We actually have too much music, and we need help planning out how to share it with you so that it's not overwhelming, and you could actually, like, experience it in a way that's... We're literally just trying to figure out a distribution... And not just, like, here's a bunch of music, you know? ...pattern and method. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just realized the, the GSG, um... A highlight viewing stream is going on right now. Do we want to raid into that, or do we want to raid into like a a friend? Because there's so many people streaming. I don't I don't know who to choose. Do we? Do you guys want to help us choose? Is Sid? Sid is always streaming. Um, we also have New Future Fantasy, who we love. Oh, it's an ambient, which I haven't seen New Future Fantasy do ambient yet. I love Sid. Sprite Guard, who's doing techno loves Thursday. Me. So you can do ambient. We can do techno. We can do Sid, who's soldering. We're um, a great we've got big and family. then the Golden Shrimp Guild's uh, highlight viewing. So, if anybody Sid. wants to choose, we're Sid. happy to be open to that. Sid. But yeah, Sid. very excited to uh, basically as soon as I turn the stream off, we're gonna go start making cupcakes for our anniversary on Saturday. <laughs> um, and I'm or really bagels. excited to see. We should make our own bagels. We sh you can make your own bagels, can't you? Boil. I might have Boil. done myself in, folks, and you've I heard think, it live on the stream. Okay, so this is our goal now, is we're going to figure out how to make our own bagels. You heard it here. This is what happens, so I don't know if you picked up on it, but, like, the two of us being alone around each other 24-7, it's like, idea, idea, we should do it, let's go do it. Okay, now this is what we're doing. It's pure idea all the time. <laughs> so having this, like, uh, focus of our Twitch community to help us, like, Make sure we put things out. In Actually the decide where to distribute some of this completion. Could really help. <laughs> Could really help. Yeah. Otherwise, um, it'll probably be another like three to five years before I'm like, okay, we're allowed to put this out. We're allowed to show a little bit of our work to the All public. All right. Nobody else said anything, so I think it's going to be uh, Sid, just because I feel uh, I want to give our love to... I was uh, feeling Sid. You know, like a person instead of the, the highlight. We can keep the it's highlight. It's been a while. Like, keep the GSG open in like a let's, second tab. Let's raid into Sh Sid and redeem slap in the base. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Don't tell him, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's going to be unhinged. All right, all right. I think I found him. Okay. The tribe has spoken. That was awesome. You all are awesome. Make sure to give yourselves that like hug, pat on the back for being amazing in the chat. Yeah, um, it was an amazing chat. And we look forward to seeing you on Saturday and then obviously like all the time. <laughs> Lily's gonna have a lot of fun reading that later. Yeah, I hope she does. I know she'll be upset about the lag, but we do what we can here. We're working on it. I know, I like joked we about lag servers. and like they were kinda like I know, I know. Really? It's not a joke. We can't, we can't, we can't, we gotta take the lag seriously. So we need to, we need to sort of, uh, start brainstorming, um, how we can make that better. Thank you for being here, Mr. Thank X. Thank you. Thank, thank you for taking thank all you. our, sh <laughs> thank you for taking all our shit and just like hanging out anyway. Thanks, Wolf. No, seriously, like never any shit. You know shade. what's in love? Cause we've met in person now. I absolutely <laughs> heart you. And Hearts. can't wait to hang out again. Hearts. So. All right, we'll see you all in Sid's stream. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Saturday.